Story time about how my best friend punched me in the face just to impress a group of boys. A little background information. My best friend did not have a lot of experience with boys. Once she did start talking to boys, this girl did a personality switch as soon as a boy walked into a room. She would usually just act a little bit more of like a pick me, but never like make fun of me in front of the boys. Well, the one night her and I, we went to this party. Her and I liked the same guy, which is always a recipe for disaster. But to make sure that there were no issues, we both decided that whoever he liked would get him. Majority of the night, he ends up talking to me. And I didn't really think that there was a problem because she seemed like she was fine with it. Until a little bit later, I hear her screaming, I wanna fight someone. She's like, Brad, do you know that she can't fight? He's like, oh, you can't fight? And he goes, I think you two should fight right now. So then I'm like, I'm not doing this. And she goes, no, I think Brad's right. I think we should fight. So then I'm like, okay, well, you can have fun fighting somebody else because I'm leaving. She runs outside, grabs me by my hair and punches me in the face and just literally actually just beats the shit out of me. I did end up pressing charges on her, but moral of the story, don't be best friends with girls who don't know how to act around men. Story time on how I found out my cousin was racist. To set the mood, we were at the hospital. My grandma was literally on her deathbed. My sister and I are in the room. Keep in mind, everyone is quiet. And on this side of the family, they have always made us feel like if we were different, like we didn't belong in the family. This cousin swore like she was my grandma's favorite cousin, even though my grandma really didn't like anybody at all. This cousin is holding her hand. You know, everybody is silent in the room. What are we supposed to say? Then all of a sudden, she just starts mumbling stuff under her breath. She starts indirectly and passive-aggressively saying, Oh, why are they even here? They didn't even care about my grandma. My grandma didn't even like them. And my sister and I, we look at each other and we're like, Is she being for real? Like, girl, be for real. We stayed quiet because this was not the time nor the place to be arguing with someone, especially because my grandma's laying there. You know what I mean? And she continues saying this stuff. So my sister looks at me. She gives me the eye like, I'm about to beat this bitch. So my sister turns around and she looks at her and she's like, are you talking about me? This is legit when all hell breaks loose. They start going at it, they start arguing, ba 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 Even though my cousin started everything, we got kicked out of the room, of course. And as we were leaving, I will never ever forget what she said to me. She was legit like, bye Guadalajara bitches, bye Guadalajara bitches. And in my head, I was like, girl, her boyfriend is literally a Mexican and your kids are half Mexican. And y'all, it literally took every inch and soul of my body not to say something rude. All I said to my cousin was, we're not even saying anything to you. Why are you being racist? And y'all, when I tell you that me and my sister were mad that day, we were mad. Because it's like, educate yourself, honey. Why would you say that? It's 2023 and your mother of three. Shouldn't you know better, ma'am? When people are ignorant like that, you honestly have to educate them because there is something going on in their life where they were not educated of how the world works. And that's how I found out my cousin was racist. Story time about how a side chick showed up to my house only to find out that I was also a side chick. Disclaimer, this is not my story time. It was sent to me on Instagram. Finding out there was a second side chick made me vomit. You might just hate me by the time this story time is over, but hear me out. I'm 27 years old and I live with my parents. When I was 19 years old, I was essayed. This basically turned me into a hermit. In other words, I could not leave my house and I could not be alone. My parents did their best to help me out. They even got me therapy, even though they actually don't believe in therapy. And thankfully, therapy did help. After about three years, I was able to go out on my own and I was able to get a job. I started hanging out with my friends again and I even decided to go back to school. This meant I was constantly busy. I actually landed a pretty good job, which meant that I was making some money and my parents asked me if I wanted to move out. This to me was like my worst nightmare. There was no way I wanted to live by myself, but I appreciated the fact that my parents knew it would be the best thing for me. I actually did end up moving out for like two months, but I ran straight back home after one night I heard somebody knock on my door and then they were gone. My parents of course accepted me back into their house and since then I haven't left. A few years after that I graduated from school and I wanted to open up my own little business. My best friend and I went ahead and started our own business and it was pretty successful. We were making cakes and a whole bunch of different things and we basically catered to private parties. During this time I started meeting a lot more people and i also started getting hit on by a few of my clients but i never went for anybody my parents tried to convince me to open up to somebody but i just couldn't it was almost physically impossible for me to do that obviously because of my history but also because a lot of these guys were super forward they didn't care i was catering for their party they just wanted to get my number right away it obviously turned me off so that was not going to happen but one day i show up to a catering job and i meet him and he is so polite so sweet and such a gentleman 
But there was only one problem. He was married. Now, I'd love to tell you that his wife was a bitch or that she was mean to him or something like that. But nope, she was perfectly sweet and really beautiful too. After catering the party, he actually got my number because he needed to pay me. And this is when things just started happening. He asked me a question about some of the cupcakes that we served. I shared a recipe with him. And after that, it was almost on a weekly basis that he would reach out and ask me something. Eventually, it went from him asking me things to asking about me. And at first, I was definitely questioning why he would ask me things. But my mom told me that he was probably interested in me. And as bad as it sounds, yes, he was married. My mom was encouraging me to talk to him. I think at this point, my parents were just so desperate for me to find somebody that they didn't care if he was a married man. His wife and him actually used my catering service again, and I was able to see him after a few months. During the catering event, he took it upon himself to help me and my friend. He helped us unload the car and helped us in the setup. It was after this that he reached out and asked me if I wanted to get a coffee. I went, and then my life changed. He basically opened up to me and told me that he was really unhappy in his marriage, and that for the first time, he was feeling something for somebody. Me! I know it sounds terrible because he's married, but for the first time, I was feeling something for somebody after so long. I didn't want to just let it go. When he asked me if he could see me again, I said yes, and we became friends. And after that, we became lovers. He also became my best friend, and he also gave me the confidence to start doing more things on my own. Other than my parents, I never had anybody encourage me to do anything on my own. It made me feel like he had my best interest at heart. Months are going by, and I'm falling more and more in love with him. After a while, I asked him if he wanted to be honest with his wife about our relationship and he said no. He said that if they ever were to divorce, that he would lose a lot of money. And he also had kids and he didn't want to hurt them, so I just let it go. This is when I started noticing that he was acting strange, and he stopped trying to see me every single day. He started seeing me about three times a week. Then one day, a girl shows up to my house, young and pretty like me. In fact, she looked a lot like me. He obviously has a type. She knocks on my door, and as soon as I open, she starts yelling. Then she tells me that she's seeing my boyfriend and that I need to break up with him because she's in love with him. At first, I thought she was confused. I was convinced she had the wrong house. That is until she pulled out her phone and started showing me pictures of them together. Pictures in compromising positions. My stomach started to hurt so bad, I actually had to sit down on the floor. This is when she realized that I had no idea what she was talking about but that's when i let her know that i was also a side chick she simply walked away and said nothing to me i obviously grabbed my phone and called him right away but he didn't answer and she asked me if i want to go with her to talk to him i was like sure i couldn't believe he had a second side chick i wasn't special anymore because it meant that everything he was doing with me he was also doing with her we show up to his place but nobody was home he finally messaged me three days later he said he went on vacation with his wife and forgot to tell me when i confronted him about the second side chick he said that she was lying then i told him i saw all the pictures then he said that he would break up with her and stay with me. He even promised that he would leave his wife. At this point, I don't believe anything he says. But I'm so in love with him and because of my history, there's no way I could ever be interested in anyone else. Should I take him back? I feel like I have no other choice. 